What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're doing well today. Today we have got the newest uh, MX Bikes shop release. This is a track created by Bradley Clay, and those eagle-eyed of you will kind of remember this a little bit. I did a video probably a couple of weeks back now at this point, uh, talking about rough in Supercross in general, and we played a very, very early version of this. However, we are all done now. She's looking very, very pretty, like nice and dolled up. We've got a nice nighttime scenery as well, very, uh, very atmospheric. And you'll also see, if I come way over to the end here, you can see why I might be a little bit of a happy boy right now. We don't get many enduro cross tracks in this game, but this looks nuts. It's huge. Like, it's actually ridiculous. It like just goes on forever. Just goes back and forth, twists and turns. Uh, Bradley did tell me, apparently this was an absolute nightmare to create, to get it to work nicely and smoothly in game without any weird physics going on. Uh, so I'm so excited to do it. Uh, this track, I mean, the, the, the pack as a whole, includes five different tracks. So we've got our enduro cross track over here, which I'll be doing first. We've got uh, track number one right here. And then we have got track number two over here as well. However, these two come with both a heavily rotted and probably quite difficult version, as well as a fully prepped and smooth version. So if you're one of them people that doesn't like the uh, the deep ruts in Supercross, then you have exactly the same version of the tracks here, but being nice and smooth as if it's first uh, first ride out of the day, which is a big W from Bradley for doing that for us. So I'm very excited to get into these. We're going to start all the way over here. And then we'll go for what everybody else wants again. I'm sorry. But yeah, let's spin some laps. For all of you passionate gamers, you can now get 20% off all G Fuel products worldwide by using code LINS at checkout. And for any of you motorheads looking for some new drip or apparel, use code MXPR underscore LINS15, fxrracing.eu to get 15% off. All links and codes are in the description down below. Enjoy the video and drop a cheeky little like and subscribe. Now, I've actually been quite enjoying this Yamaha for uh, supercross at the moment i'm not sure what it is about it it just seems to handle things really really well and if you was able to stop by my last gp stream cam sent me a 450 uh, outdoor setup for the yamaha as well and it, I, did, I never had like the raw pace to keep up with everybody but the consistency at least for me at least was really really good much better than i expected and uh, a lot of people in my chat said that apparently the yamaha is basically a no-go for a road and at the end of the race but it, honestly for me it felt like a completely backwards by like, way that my i feel like my speed got better the more and more i played so we're over here we're on the enduro cross track i'm just going to try and find the start to make sure that i actually go the right way so the start is right here we are gonna go all the way down the straight here and then i'm guessing oh god which way do we go it looks like it turn, oh, you can turn both left and right. Oh, no. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I don't know which way I'm meant to go off the start. After a cheeky little bit of reconnaissance, I have noticed we have a cone on the inside of this corner right here, which leads me to believe that we come down the start and we turn left. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. And we'll take number two. We'll pretend the first bit never happened. Right, so on the brakes, round to the left right here. And this is where it begins. So... Let's see how all of these logs and how all of these pipes ride with each other. So far, so good, straight off the bat. This, oh, this will be a little bit. I need to try and remember to get these logs in a straight line rather than two turns. Okay, all the way up. We'll step down. I 100% reckon there's going to be, be a few uh, situations here where I just get, get sent straight out the front of the bike. No chance of surviving. It'll jump into here. Yes. Oh, God, hang on. Um, little wheelie. Nice, pop her around. Double this. Rep, rep. All the way up and over. Clean. Okay, okay. And then your yeet. Uh, so what you're looking at here is uh, usually you would uh, expect these basic logs and these pipes to have collisions themselves. I don't think that is fully the case. So if I pause and if I go into replay and I'll show you exactly what we're showing here. So this is a reason why I don't think I will ever make an enduro uh, track in my life. Is uh, Essentially what we've got here is a dual height map. So there is an invisible height map that you can't see. So obviously we've got our main height map here for the dirt. There is another height map that kind of roughly resembles the shape of this log, but is much easier to ride on than an object would be. So yeah, you see where my front wheel is going through it slightly. That is because this log does not have collisions. There is a height map underneath this. Very, very um, confusing stuff. Very difficult stuff. And uh, so yeah, if you ever wonder what goes into creating enduro stuff in this game and what makes it all work properly, now you know. Not, not an easy thing to do whatsoever. Should we just go yeet? Oh, boys. <laughs> Actually rides really, really nicely. 
up and over this. There's only 16 gates, I believe, on this. But to be fair, I'm well aware that the enduro uh, community on this game is quite small. So even if I could fill up a 16-man lobby around here, I'd be a very, very happy man. You could 100% just quad all of that. Okay. I'm, I'm crafting. I'm working up the uh, working up the hotlines already. Around to the left, into another little rock garden. Up and double all the way out. Nice. Around to the right. Another double. It's small. I feel like it's quite super, super crossy. Up and over that. I'm surprised that the physics are handling this okay so far. I usually expect uh, all kinds of wonkiness to go on, but I suppose since the most recent OEM update, where it kind of fixed heel physics and all that good stuff, I haven't really like tried it too much, if that makes sense. So then we come down to... Come down and around here, I think. Just having a look at the track. Oh, no. Oh, dear. I've realised I have gone very, very wrong. Oh, no. Hang on. Hang on. There you go. You can see a lot better now. Over on the map. Oh, God. I've been such a goober. No. Oh, when I landed this jump, oh, I carried on going straight across here. You're not meant to. You're not meant to use it at all, even though it does It does look like a jump, and I just absolutely sent it. Oh, I'm such an idiot. You meant to go up here. I've done half the track backwards. So anyway, we're going to do another lap of the track now to show what it actually looks like. So <laughs> left off the start. Actually, just try sending our way through here. Let's try and, oh, I'll try and speed run this. And then we pop a Yui up and over our little log here. Oh, a little bit of a sharp collision on that. It's all right. We survive. Jump through our rock garden. See, this is uh, this was the issue that I had here because my track lines were so thick on my Max Hub map. Couldn't see exactly where the track went. Now we've learned from it. I'm a more knowledgeable man now because of this. Let's land this up and over this one. That was much smoother than last time. Double our way out again. Yes. Then round to the left. We're just going to roll this one for now. Probably going to roll this one as well. You might be able to send that as a double, but probably uh, roughly safer for the time being. Up and over our pipes and our tyres. Now this right here is where I was being an idiot. So we get up and over here. We then hook a left, back down the start straight, cross over to the right side, and now we are where we need to be. God, I feel so stupid. So I was riding so much of this backwards earlier. Oh, God, Bradley's probably going to be watching the start of this. Be like, no, you're going the wrong way. What are you doing, you doofus? I'm so sorry. Right, over our logs. Oh, can we double it from this side? Oh, yes, you can. Little tie tap. Yes. Then round to the left. How big? Oh, God. 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 We're alive. It's fine. Right. Round to the right. Skirt. Can't double that because my uh, trajectory was not good. Yeah, so this isn't meant to be quadruple backwards. It's more of a... Ahem. 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 please. Thank you. There we go. It's more of a, uh, a double double going back the other way. Oh, my goodness. And then go and double this. Yes. And again. Another one. Yes. Gonna have to send this on. Yes. Oh, this is clean. There's parts of it that just feel so super crossy. Like it flows really nicely. And then we go here and we jump around. Oh, so we jump around. We try and maneuver our way around and over these rocks. Land it. Thank you. And then over to the left. Just a small little height there. I'm gonna double this. Oh hell yeah. Oh hell yeah. Land it. Land it. Land it. I mean, I can see why the supercross suspension would work for it. I'm stuck. Please help. Please help. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. No, push. Get a little bit of momentum behind us. I can see why this is a super cross suspension would work around here, because it's lots of uh, like peaky little jumps and bumps, which I suppose it's meant to be good at absorbing, whether it's whoops or like quite sharp jump transitions. And then we double over this, double into the corner, pop a 90 to the right get as straight as possible and go again and that is it there you go there's a lack of the enduro across the way it's actually meant to be ridden this time it took me like three different attempts to get it right but uh, yeah you can see what it's all comprised of now you can 100 percent jump all the way through that so there you go there is the enduro again i'm not going to spend ages and ages and ages on this because i know a lot of you care more for the supercross side of things so we are now going to transition our way over to uh, i'm going to do the rough versions of these tracks rather than the graded versions I might have to keep this kind of map for the future, you know, because I actually quite like where it's a little bit more narrow. You can just define the track limits more. So we have got track numero uno here. This is SX1 prepped. I'm just making sure that I am going the correct direction, which I believe is this way right here. So in my video where I wrote the very, very, very early version of this, uh, I was talking about the rough in Supercross and stuff, and I feel like the last couple of tracks that Stone Riders got 
well done at least in my opinion is what we need that's more not so much just from not from a casual standpoint at all i'm well aware that the pro races that we've been doing recently for the casual player is just not viable but and this is a big but and it cannot lie you can deny but <laughs> they're not made for the casual player they are made for the, the quote unquote best people at the game to uh, to be racing against each other on so I think where we're at right now is is pretty decent in terms of roughness. Uh, probably a little bit biased because I done really well in the end and I did okay before I hit the choke button at Seattle. Um, but yeah, I've been I'm quite enjoying the direction the tracks have gone in recently. I hope it it stays that way. I think he's just trying to replicate the real characteristics per track. So like Indy, for example, was very very deep because it gets deep in real life. Um, I think Birmingham was quite similar to that and then last round with seattle i feel like he mimicked the ruts quite well but ended up forming by the end of the uh, the 450 race too and i just like it i like the direction that the tracks are going in uh, so we wish for some more of it i'm a fan of having ruts in between the jumps now it just adds a lot more character to the track there's you can like move your bike to left or right by the tiniest bit and you'll get a whole different trajectory of the jump face and that just means that you have to be a little bit more precise when you're hitting your jumps or there's more i guess wiggle room for trying to find faster lines and trying to stay lower whilst also hitting the same rhythms and i, I like it i'd like to hear other people's uh, other people's opinions and that more so from just varying skill levels as well because i'm obviously i'd like to consider myself in hopefully maybe like the top five percent of people who play this game i'd be interested to see it just from all different levels of players and see if it's a fun experience or if it's something that just takes away all of the fun for you. Um, also where that he does create AMS versions, so for people that aren't necessarily doing the races but still want to get to enjoy the tracks in a smoother sense, then those versions are there. Uh, but yeah, let me, let me know how you've been enjoying them so far. And I will say, this it feels like this is riding a little bit differently to when I first tested it. I feel like it's made quite a few changes here, where you can't hit as big of the lines as you used to. So where the jump faces have been worn away a little bit kind of limits you to your, your triples or your doubles rather than sending big quads everywhere, which again, I, I do enjoy. I, I hate when we just can quad every single jump in, in a rhythm. I mean, to an extent, I suppose there's a realistic aspect to it because if the real life riders had no fear of crashing like we do, obviously it doesn't matter if we crash, we just press the respawn button where they end up going to the, uh, to the emergency room <laughs> in a lot of pain. Now, I imagine they'd probably try sending everything until they could do it consistently, but yeah, I like I like when it's just toned back a little bit and you more have to focus just on your corner speed, how you get the ruts, how low you stay in the rhythms, and uh, just, I mean, obviously a bit biased again as well, because that seems to be the conditions that I perform better in, but I've, I'm really enjoying it. And I, I know I've said it a couple of times now, but I do need to just say again, because I know people don't watch every single video on the channel, I unfortunately will not be here for Friday. Well, I won't be here from Friday all the way through till I think I get back home kind of like Tuesday midday-ish. Um, so it'll be business as usual from, from Tuesday. Uh, however, Mon uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I will not be able to do any live streams at all. Uh, I'm just going to be away visiting the girlfriend again for the, uh, the Easter weekend, the Easter holidays. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try and pre-record a bunch as I always like to do. So you should still have some content to feast your eyes upon. But yeah, it's just the live streams that won't be there. And I'm, I really am trying to just live stream more when I'm home at the moment. It just ends up being so beneficial to the channel, just in general. Like, it, it gets pushed out to some newer people. The, the streams all seem to do quite well view-wise as well. And uh, whilst I try not to stare at numbers too much, because I feel like it demoralises you a little bit some days, it's always good to just have a, a general idea of uh, where your audience comes from. And I always appreciate all of you that stop by in the streams. We see so many familiar faces each time. I like seeing when we get some new chatters popping up from time to time as well. And just know that I do appreciate each and every one of you that show by to uh, all the streams. And I'm just trying to make things a little bit different as well. I don't want every stream just to be, oh, more races and more races and more races again. Oh, we're doing more races. I just, I'm trying to vary up a little bit. And uh, we're just in a little bit of a difficult time now on bikes, aren't we? Just where you know track limitations uh, from no tracks being allowed to put on mods right now and so uh, yeah just a bunch of uh, bunch of stuff bunch of drama still getting the occasional shop track like this one right here which really does help and i'm just trying to expand out a little bit try some other stuff i know we've got a sledders update coming out on the 29th i believe it is which is really annoying because i might have to wait until i get home to cover it and then i feel like a lot of the hype might be gone by then but it is what it is. You know, real world is much more important than uh, virtual games quite a lot of the time. I, oh, I like that little step over there. You have to do a little bit of a little bit of a manoeuvre to get the bike to downside it properly. 
But no, no, I feel like I've got a little bit of a flow going now. I have got a flow going. I'm, I'm barking. Again, I like the ruts in the corners. I mean, you could cut down and take any single one of them ruts that you'd like, and they would all be pretty damn equal. I'm liking going outside here, wheeling over, and then going trip win. But that gives you a good run. Then triple again, triple into the corner. Um, Bradley does say that he's this is meant to ride quite well on both 450 and 250. 100% I can see that. I think all the lines that I'm hitting right now, uh, you could all, you could hit on a 250, no problem. You'd have to be quite precise, just from the, uh, the, the difference in power. But 100%, oh, you'd be able to do them. Can I just step over this now? Yes. Then to the inside, double in. Step over. Oh, no, I can almost... Okay, I can quad that then. And then I could probably go triple and double out. So, so many different line choices. Then just go inside. I can still triple over there from the third rut rather than the far outside. Yeah, I mean, you can see as well, the, the Yamaha. The Yamaha's handling it quite well. I mean, they're, they're smooth ruts, to be fair. They're not choppy ruts, so I'm not too sure how well it would handle the, the super, super deep stuff. But it's doing a pretty damn good job. What if we go double and I then triple? Oh, yeah, you definitely can. I think I need a little bit more speed, say a little bit lower over the initial double, but you can definitely mix things up there. Let's try cutting down. Let's just go double in, go double, oh, double again. Yeah, I've got out of, out of a little bit of a rhythm there. Definitely some double triples. Let's cut down again. The whoops, they look very intimidating on the surface where they're all uh, uneven and have ruts through them, but actually really, really straightforward. So you can get through them no problem at all. Let's go to the outside. We step on. Oh, we can step off. Step over. Oh, I'm kind of muscling the bike around a little bit. What's this tight inside like here? Inside, yeah, just inside double, double as well. I'm liking this. It looks like he's put a lot of uh, time, thought, and effort in getting a lot of these different ruts and line choices viable, which I absolutely love to see. I think it, it just adds to the, I guess, shelf life, if that's the right way of doing it for tracks. Whereas instead of loading it up and just rocking a couple of laps, it's like, okay, I've got all the lines down now. You can just spend a lot longer experimenting with different options. And I'm here for it. It's very nice. So can we go double, can go double, triple, and then triple again. Might even be able to quad way out of there if you try and stretch it. That was kind of like a half assed attempt from me, just because I thought I'd have enough speed to triple it. But again, where there's ruts on the jump faces, you can never be 100% sure that you'll go exactly where you want to go. Let's try going inside here. We'll roll this where he's worn it away. Step on, step off. Can we quad? Oh, maybe there's a little bit of a stretch. Did get a very lucky Poboso bounce there. But no, I'm a big fan of this. So this is uh, SX1, the uh, eroded version, not the prepped version. So now we have another track to go through now, which is off in the distance ahead of me over there, which is going to be SX2. Get to show off the bike life skills real quick whilst we work our way over to number two. This is definitely what all of the, uh, the orange Austrian will not say the exact name. All the orange Austrian uh, riders definitely do. That is backwards. Let's uh, pop a UE real quick. I mean, I think that's backwards. Or maybe not. Uh, no, it's not. I'm being a goober. Let's turn around. Here's this way. And we'll get the uh, yeet up and over. We'll scrub our way to the corner here. And on. Off. Land. Double. Yaw yeet up and over. Smooth. Jump into the corner. Right, go around to the right. I just, I, I think there's something about the experience of learning a new Supercross track that I just really, really enjoy. Just trying to work out the lines for the first time. Oh, this is an interesting section. They're all kind of like really low three foot singles, but I think as where the ruts are, you'll be able to blitz them pretty hard. Oh my god, that whoop section's a little bit. Oh, oh I'm down. Okay, we'll go again. This, that whoop section's a little bit more tricky than the, uh, the one on the other track. Okay, so we double in. Let's try, I don't really want more speed. I think I had a lot of speed and that was my issue. I couldn't stop from the corner. Do, 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 do. There we go, right. Round to the right, triple. Yes, step on, step off, double. Do, 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 step down, double in. I just wanted to see, I just wanted to see if I could break it. You can't step over there, that's good. That's good, he's thought of that. And then we'll go up and over this, slam on the brakes, hit the skirt. Okay, so this track is shorter than the other one, I've, I think, in terms of lap time. At least, at least it feels shorter, unless it's just like a quicker a quicker layout overall. Let's go double in here. Definitely get a triple out of this. Yes. And I think the jump faces on this, they feel slightly more eroded, like a little bit more worn away. So it gives you uh, more pop coming up and over the jumps. Go around to the left. And then triple in. Yes, triple out. Smooth, clean, lovely. Round to the left again. I, I do like that middle rope. 
I generally think you'd get more speed off that middle right than if you went all the way to the, uh, the top of the corner. And then triple on, triple off, double into the turn. Try and work our way up the dragon's back. Thank you, Baboso. He's actually had a soul. He's let me off today. Let's roll this. And then double in so we don't try breaking the track. Triple over the soupy triple. And I think scaling wise, I do not see any reason why 250s would uh, shrug around here. Maybe with stuff like that, like going on off on a 250 would be hard. No, I think you could just step over instead. But yeah, the um, a lot of the jumps I'm checking up for a little bit on the 4 fatty, which I don't mind. Again, the, the difference between 250 and 450 on this game is so, so big. It's got to be so difficult trying to make a track scaling work for both of them really, really well. Let's try... If I go around the outside this time... Uh, no, it does. It tightens up quite a lot. It turns into quite a sharp 90 at the end, which I'm not not vibing with the outside too much. I much prefer where I went inside, roll, and then go triple, triple. I think that's got to be the fastest way. Let's go inside, double. So you go double, double, double. Let's try and hit this dragon's back better this time. Up, up and over. I feel like you get some wild sort of tire taps going on through that section. Step up and over that triple. Go whoop. Oh no. Oh, oh. Oh, screw it. Now what? Jump in here. This one feels more technical than the SX1. I can't put my finger on it. It might just be layout-wise. Uh, but yeah, so far, just to try and get a, just a good normal flow going seems a little bit trickier, which is odd because the, the jumps, I don't think any of the jumps are anywhere near as like big or as much of a stretch. I think the rhythms themselves should be easier. It's just because of uh, where they're a little bit more eroded away. You've got to be on, your, be on your toes a little bit more. A little bit more tricky. Then, of course, this track does also have a, a groomed version. Obviously, we do not uh, we do not approve grooming, but it has a groomed version if you want to do that. Let's go over. And yeah, yeet. Triple way out. Nice. That was a bit better than just going roll double or double single. And let's go to the outside. Can I step over this? You can step over this. Nice. Caught into the corner. Yes. Big send. What about tight inside here? Step on. Step off. I do not hate that at all. It's very rare these days that you get inside lines on Supercross that are actually beneficial for you. A lot of time it's just round the outside everywhere that you can. Try and go as fast as possible. But I'm quite vibing with this. I'm liking it so far. Let's go back to my inside here. Go triple, triple. I think that's just got to be the fastest by a long shot. Gonna be brave. Let's try inside before the whoops. Probably a terrible idea. Oh no. Actually, that was actually quite good. Rode through that nicely. Then step on, step off. Let's try it outside before the dragon's back. So, a bit more momentum behind us. Yep, yeah, that was nice. Oh, I tried to get a little tire tap going in there, but I just carried too much speed in. Hit the wrong point on the jump. And triple. Oh, step on. Oh, God, yeah, just missed the right in the corner. So, you can see, like, if I take each section of the track, it's quite straightforward in uh, like what line you can hit. It's then trying to just glue an entire lap together. It gets that a little bit more tricky, but uh, it might just be personal preference, but I actually prefer that. I like tracks that, that challenge me. I mean, we've all, we've all got them tracks that we like playing now and then that you can just kind of brain rot on. So you just hold down your right trigger and turn a little bit and you feel like you're going a million miles an hour. But I do like slowing things down a bit from time to time. Trying to really focus, work on work on techniques, and it's like if you can go fast around tracks like like these two supercross tracks here, then you'll be able to go fast around majority of tracks in the game. So definitely, I recommend you know, pushing the boat out a little bit. Try and experiment with uh, some more difficult tracks. If you're someone maybe you're a couple of hundred hours deep and you stick to your your public uh, servers, nothing wrong with playing public servers like the PT etc. that have the stock tracks on rotation, but Try branching out a little bit. I promise. The more you throw yourself in at the deep end, uh, the more you, the, well, the more and the faster you will improve at the game. So just worth uh, worth experimenting a little bit. But honestly, all three of these tracks, I think, have been so much fun to learn and to play. And I'm 100% going to be playing that enduro cross track quite a bit in my free time. That is really, really enjoyable. I might see if we can get some uh, public races going around there as well. Because I think the only other enduro cross track we've got in the game at the moment that like properly works is uh, Resolute Kraken's uh, extreme indoor arena cross uh, summer con so, arena cross enduro cross summer like uh, but yeah I hope you've enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching do, do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new if you want to uh, see some more of this and uh, have a lovely rest of the day whatever you guys are up to and I'll catch you next time peace
I'm working hard. I'm sacrificing my life. I'm sacrificing my mind. I'm sacrificing my sanity. But most importantly, I'm sacrificing my time. Boy, I feel fine. I feel like I am a king. Honestly, I can't complain. Even with faith that's the size of a grain of some salt, I will still move a mountain and do what I want. I got salt.